Okay. So because now, now we figure, you know, if, if, a, if a tree falls in quartzite, no one knows about it, right? So we're filming everything. We're starting to put this stuff up on YouTube, even the council meetings, just filming, filming the council meetings, you know, logging in the votes, boring stuff, or at least so we thought. Of course, now we've got attorney generals and things looking into this, and it's a darn good thing we were recording these council meetings and these votes and, and all of this. It's, it's been invaluable and, and kind of synchronicity that we had actually done it. But, you know, I call 911 and I say, listen, I need, I need to report a criminal trespass here. Of course, uh, they send the police over and I show them the videotape from start to finish before he comes on the property all the way to the time where he backs illegally across four lanes of highway traffic and leaves. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> and, uh, and the officers that responded went back to file the report and the police chief says, no. You're going to arrest her and her husband. Yeah. And the officer said, no. Oh. <laughs> I want to interject. Actually, I have an email from that officer to the county attorney, yeah. uh, wherein the officer questioned the county attorney about violating her civil, civil rights at that point. The town complaint form. And I said, Mr. Johnson assaulted me and committed a criminal trespass. Well, I'm walking up the steps to town hall to the meeting Tuesday night. Now, I'm a candidate for office, and they arrest me on the steps of town hall in front of my constituents. They arrested me for um, false reporting to 911 because, according to the police chief, when he looked at that video, he didn't think it was an assault. He's the only one, but he didn't think it was an assault. And then I was also arrested for... Um, interfering with government operations because I wouldn't let this man trespass on my property and take pictures without a warrant. Now the interesting thing is in Arizona you have what's called a plain view arrest. Now you can either arrest somebody with a warrant or you can say gee I was standing there and I saw that guy grab that woman's purse and run past me and I have reasonable cause to believe that he's a purse snatcher. But if it's a misdemeanor you're you're supposed to uh, you know Basically, it's a sight and release kind of a write you a ticket sort of thing. So from the get-go, it's pretty clear that this was not a lawful arrest. But it didn't matter because they managed to get us fingerprinted, background check probably a few more times, and uh, you know, of course, everybody wanted to post bail and and all that. And and uh, then I, I get out after a few hours in the jail, and a couple of days later, they arrest my husband for the same thing for uh, false reporting just to law enforcement. Tell who bailed you out. Yeah, the mayor bailed me out. <laughs> <laughs> and then what really sucked was um, immediately every judge in the county recused themselves. So they didn't have a judge to even arraign us. It took almost six months to get my bail money back before they could find a judge from a, a, a guy that I have a, a fair amount of faith in as far as the judicial system goes, a, a judge named John Henry out of Wickenburg. Seems like a pretty fair guy as far as judges go. I, 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 probably the best of the bunch. I think I got lucky that, that he took the case and is willing to drive in. As a matter of fact, he's the only judge that will take any of these politically motivated cases. In the meantime, the town prosecutor, the county prosecutor, didn't want to prosecute anything as a felony. The police chief's filling out supplements to all these reports, right, where he, he in his infinite wisdom, is recommending felony charges on all this. Of course, the county prosecutor, he's like, this isn't a winnable case, there's no likelihood of conviction, I will not try this as a felony. So they kick it back to the town court, and the town prosecutor says the same thing, so they fire the town prosecutor. <laughs> now, they couldn't find anybody to, to become the new town prosecutor except this fine fellow named Martin Brannon. Now, I've already danced with Martin Brandon once because he was the county prosecutor when I beat them on the animal control ticket. <laughs> and in the meantime, he'd been the working, uh, I, I, I'm not positive, it might Apache be, county. was it Apache County? Okay. He was working as the assistant prosecutor in another county, and he was, uh, he got fired from that job because he recommended, I believe, that a couple of sheriffs interrogate a murderer without an attorney present, and it botched the case, and the murderer walked, and the Bar Association sanctioned him, and it, nobody but Martin Brandon was willing to work in courtside. So they hired him as, on an interim basis in the hopes that they could, you know, throw us all in jail. And they, they level a few more things at me. 
I go to town hall. I'm trying to get a news story. Now I got my little newspaper going, and, and my husband says, Honey, honey, I just heard on the police scanner. I think they made a big drug bust on the freeway. Maybe it says they're going to bring in the suspect in the car, you know, and, and now you know where the door to the jail is behind the town hall, so why don't you go over there and see if you could get a statement from them. I think it's the officers that don't hate you, and, and then you can write a nice story for the police department and show that you don't hate all officers, you just hate corrupt officers. So I say, sure, honey, and I grab my camera, and, and now town hall at Quartzsite is not fenced off. There's a lovely walking path that invites you from the front of town hall to the back of town hall, and the parking lot's wide open, but there's apparently a little sign I didn't see that says employees only. But it's okay, you know, I mean, I, I pulled in, and nobody was there yet, and I'm getting ready to pull out of the parking lot and go park around the front and, and wait for them when in comes all the police cars. So I quick throw it in park and I say, well, I'll just ask them if they want to make a statement. I'm the press now. And the, the officer was very nervous. Same officer that came when the biz, uh, building official assaulted me. And he's like, no, no story, no story. Okay, Jim, no problem. I'm out of here. Well, did you see the sign? No, what sign? Well, the sign says employees only. Hey, no problem. I'm out of here. So he follows me to my car and he asks me for my ID. Well, hey, you already know I got no wants, no warrants, no nothing. Sure, what the heck, I'll play. So I, I rolled up the windows, so about 103 outside. I locked the door. I left a crack of about an eighth of an inch, just enough for him to slide my ID back in. And I got on the phone and I called the mayor and I said, Ed, I think I'm in a pickle. So I, he, he says he's not doing anything. He's going to come on over. He is an employee. He can be in the parking lot, right? So it was a good call to make. So here comes the chief of police and he knocks on my window. And he says, uh, Mrs. Jones? Did he tell you he was writing you a ticket? I said, no. He said, well, he's writing you a ticket. You can't leave. I said, I can't leave, Chief. Am I under arrest? Because as far as I know, either you're under arrest or you, you're free to go. So I said, well, am I under arrest, Chief? And he says, no. Yes. <laughs> I said, what am I under arrest for, Chief? And he thinks about it for a second and he says, trespassing. So, I called 911 <laughs> and I said to the nice lady on the phone at dispatch, I said, I'm sitting in the parking lot of Quartzsite Town Hall and the police chief says I'm under arrest and he wants me to leave my vehicle, but I have a lawsuit against him for harassment and I don't feel very comfortable stepping out of the vehicle without someone here to witness this. There's a sheriff on the other side of the parking lot who can't see me because he's been blocked by the transit van and could you just send him over here? I, I'm totally willing to leave my vehicle, but just I just want someone else here. Well, in the meantime, here comes the mayor. So I said, okay, uh, she says she's going to send the sheriff over, and I said, well, the mayor just pulled in. I, I, I think I got some witnesses. Thank you very much, and I hung up the phone. And I stepped out of my vehicle, and they said, you're under arrest, you know, and, and I said, okay, but the mayor gets my car keys. Chief says, no, he doesn't. I said, yes, the mayor can have my car keys. And I, I said, hey, I catch. So I tossed my car keys like a girl, and they landed about 10 feet in front of the mayor. <laughs> so Ed, not as quick on the draw as I would have liked him to be, <laughs> goes over to pick up my keys. <laughs> and the police chief runs across the parking lot and shoves the mayor out of the way. Wow. Ooh. And grabs my car keys. Did you get that on film? No, but the mayor did get arrested for it. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. I mean, to all wow. those all those conspiracy theory people who were out on the thing saying this is all a fake or a phony, or you couldn't make this stuff up. The other part of the story is is that this was Jane's third arrest since she had filed, actually filed in court for her lawsuit. And I uh, went to the chief and I said, "What are you crazy? Are you trying to give her and her attorneys a field day in the courts?" <laughs> I said, "You know, what are you doing?" He, he walked away from me. I told him, Chief, I'm the mayor. You work for me. You know, listen up. And he still walked away. So I did call both the insurance company for the town the attorney, and I called the town attorney. Tried to enlist their aid in making him stop doing this, you know. Well, he arrested me the following Tuesday as I was going to council meeting. He likes to do that on the steps. Uh, I was arrested on the way into the council meeting. 
uh, two counts of disorderly conduct and one count of interfering in police operation. <laughs> I was arraigned uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, the irony of all this is, is you remember, I was going to cover what sounded like a drug bust. Well, it comes out in the other free newspaper that the former mayor knew it was a heroin bust. Now, that means somebody in the police department's been talking about ongoing investigations with the former mayor. However, I was sitting in the holding cell when they brought the guy in. I was also sitting in the holding cell when they let him out in his street clothes. And I'm, it's under my understanding that what may have been the largest drug bust in La Paz County was tossed because the police screwed it up. But they got me. Yay! <laughs> and they got the mayor. So now, now I'm looking at I got like I don't know ten silly misdemeanors and and I, you know three trips to the to the county bed and breakfast and and we're on a first name basis. So I, of course I deliver my newspaper now to the sheriff's department in the jail. <laughs> and and now if I come back, I, you know they 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 actually told, were nice enough to tell the one uh, jailer not to cut off my wedding ring because I wouldn't be there long enough to, you know, <laughs> for whatever that's worth, that a special privilege, I guess. And then I get two zoning citations in the mail on top of everything else. So they, then we get up to the, now the police and the department have had enough of this. This has been going on a couple of years, and we've got officers, and they're like, you know, I, I grew up here, I love this community, I'm just trying to do my job, for goodness sakes. I can't even do my job. The police chiefs around running, apparently, background checks on people signing petitions to nominate you for office or signing recall petitions, that's probable cause for to ha have everything but a, a you know, a colonoscopy. Uh, he knows everything about you, that, you know, almost that your doctor knows. And so he's running around playing politics, and the officers are getting tired of this. In May, they filed a complaint say, alleging criminal abuse of the NCIC database and uh, various ethical breaches of the town procedure and policies manual and so on and so forth. They went to their union rep and uh, the police chief should have been put on um, administrative leave. Town council says that's not going to happen. He's our buddy. You know, he's doing what we want him to do. You know, and that's pretty clear by the emails between the police chief and the secretary of state's office and the voting thing and the back and forth. There's enough of a paper trail to prove conspiracy where you normally can't prove conspiracy. So the police chief is still on duty and he's setting the schedules and he's making sure the only officers left in the department, the last four, who didn't complain against him are the ones on duty at the town council meetings. Well, here comes the union rep all the way from Tucson with some lawyers and they come to the June 14th council meeting. And they formally asked the police chief to be put on administrative leave as per their own requirements. And the council gets up and walks off the dais and holds an illegal quorum in the next room on videotape, of course. Uh, so the mayor lets this man make his presentation. And then the, town, the assistant town manager, who used to be just the building official, snatches the microphone up and said, this meeting's over, everyone get the heck out. So now a crowd of about 200 and some odd people packed into a room about this size is milling about and Mike Roth who now writes for me in a column called the Patriots Corner is assaulted by a friend of the police chief. She walks up, punches him in the stomach right in front of the chief. He says, hey, hey, I've just been assaulted. And the police chief takes Barbara Bowman and, and gently escorts her out of the fray. Well, then uh, the mayor that resigned because he owed sales tax to, I don't know, $140-something thousand dollars worth, I think. But he, he's the one that ran away like a scared girl. He comes up to Mr. Roth, grabs him from behind by the T-shirt, jerks him backwards, camera's rolling, and Mike turns around and says, hey, let go of me. Police chief arrest Mike. That makes it to you, too. And we're getting a few hits off of that one. So here comes the meeting on the 28th. And we're all a little nervous. What's going to happen next? I mean, what started out a couple of years ago as fairly boring ordinary council meetings is turning into like a bad episode of Jerry Springer. <laughs> and and uh, we go to the meeting and we're all wearing red hats that say, I support QPOA, Quartzsite Police Officers Association, because those guys are the whistleblowers. They said, we will, not o we will no longer obey an unlawful order. We've had enough. We got our little red armbands, support QPOA, and one half of the room is wearing red. All the officers, their union reps, you know, that whole thing. And, the, and then the ch police chief supporters have little cheap little pieces of blue ribbon tied to their clothing and, and stuff. So they, they started calling us the red-headed thugs. 
They started posting in the, in the local papers, oh, you should have seen those red-headed thugs. So now here comes the meeting on the 28th, and I'm wearing my little red hat, and, and you know, the meeting's going pretty calmly. We're all pretty relieved. Of course, we've got new things in play. All of a sudden, for the first time, they're enforcing the fire code. We're only letting 83 people in tonight. Sorry. Rest of you, police, all you guys off duty, you know, you, you horrible redhead thugs, you, you can all just stay outside. We're not letting you in. And they had stationed one officer at each corner of the crowd. Now, two days before this meeting, for the first time in as long as I can remember, they hooked up cameras in town hall to watch the crowd. And, uh, you know, before we could get the audio, and faithfully we would go get the audio off the mic feed, but they never had their own cameras, and the cameras were on us, the audience. And I, I think that their intention was to catch somebody in the crowd heckling them or something and maybe go write them a ticket. And the, the whole meeting went really calmly, and I got up to speak. It called to the public my four minutes. Mayor Foster recognized me. And, and uh, I got up, and I, I think I spoke about 32 seconds when Councilman Winslow said, you know, point of order, she's breaking our rules, which I wasn't, and they're not his rules anyways. But he said, I want to remove, and the mayor said, Joe, you're out of order, something, something, please grab me. Mayor says, she has the floor, let go of her, they let go of me. I start to speak again, council starts yelling, screaming, shrieking, I make a motion, I second that motion, they can't do that. You know, you, you have to be recognized before you can make a motion, and I was recognized. So I had a death grip on that microphone, and uh, they got some pretty interesting footage as the police physically broke the microphone and pried it out of my hand and, and put me in some sort of chicken wing police hold. And, and what was the term? Somebody used frog marched me out the door. <laughs> now, I didn't think I was getting arrested again. I thought I was just getting removed like a drunk in a bar or something. But they handcuffed me outside and they wrote me a ticket for disorderly conduct and released me to the ambulance, which took me to have my arm x-rayed and left alone and, and mind of my own business is apparently not my fate. Uh, but what I really think is kind of interesting is I had to write about myself in my own newspaper because clearly I was the front page story. <laughs> and I went back and I watched the video as if I didn't know it was me. You know, in that moment I was thinking to myself, come on Ed, Make him let go of me, and he was trying. He did everything he could, short of you know, climbing off the podium and, and, and physically intervening, but they wouldn't listen to him. And I kept thinking, well, surely they're going to let go of me. Surely somebody's going to stop this. But when I watched the video, as, a, as, a, as if a stranger watched the video, I realized why it touched something so visceral in everybody. Because I was outraged, and even and it was me. But I mean, I just and I had to watch it and transcribe it, so I had to watch it over and over and over. And the more I watched it, the angrier I got. And it, it, apparently, you know, what's going on in courtside is a metaphor for what's going on in a lot of places. Yes. And the only difference is everyone is looking at courtside right now. So right now we're sort of the, the model for everything wrong with municipal government. And we have this golden opportunity laid at our feet. Amen. We can be the model for everything that is right about the citizens taking back their municipal government. <laughs> and that's why we're so appreciative for all of the people who have supported us, you know. We're, we're so appreciative to, to Ernie, to Alex Jones, to Judge Napolitano, to all these people who have taken up the cause of quirky little courtside Arizona. You know, because um, if Quartzite fails, so goes the nation. I mean, I really see this and I really believe this is true. You know, they're all looking at us for a happy ending. Mm -hmm. So before I just had, you know, a couple hundred thousand vendors and a couple thousand residents counting on me to stay on my ground. <laughs> and apparently now I have a lot more people than that. And they keep checking in. I mean, somebody told me, you know, take advantage of this. You'll be lucky if, the, if this holds the public interest for three to four days at the most. And here we are. This was June 28th, and we're into August, and people are still joining the supporters of Mayor Ed Foster on Facebook. And, and I've got 57,000 hits on my blog site, and it's been watched by millions of people around the world. And they're as angry as we were. And, and it, 
it's kind of exciting. I, I think it's sort of maybe it's like the second shot heard around the world uh -huh. because it's like a mini revolution is sort of awakening and people are saying, hey, this is happening in my town. What can I do about it? And they're looking at Quartzsite to see what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, how we can be successful. So I, I hope that, you know, you guys will keep pressure on the state attorney general and help us get a quick resolution before somebody seriously gets hurt <laughs> yeah. and bring these people to justice. Okay, we're going to take some questions. I want to give... Yeah, thank you. We're running short on time, so I want to, uh, we'll take some questions. I want to ask a couple of questions. I want to give Ed an opportunity Absolutely. to say, yo, what's up? Absolutely. Okay, the first question I have is, at what point were the officers suspended? What's the condition to that suspension? Are they being paid? Where are they now? Who's supporting them? Does their union attorneys have anything to do with it, et cetera? So tell me about the officers. Okay. Um, after the council refused to place the police chief on administrative leave, they conducted a private investigation uh, into um, why morale was so low in the department. <laughs> yeah, and they and they and they well. They, they put them on administrative leave, and they said, look, this big, expensive 200-some-odd page report we paid for through an attorney here in Phoenix who holds seminars on how to shut up whistleblowers. They said, look, look, this report we paid for says that the police chief just needs um, some sort of, you know, uh, training in, you know, compassion and racial sensitivity. <laughs> and because we can't actually investigate that NCIC thing. So they put them all on administrative leave for the, the horrible charge of defaming the town by being whistleblowers and complaining about the police chief. Wait, who put them on? Who put them on? The, the, town, the town manager. Because in the meantime, now they had a secret meeting. I forgot to tell you about the secret meeting. <laughs> yeah. They had a secret meeting on a Sunday at noon That's and tried violation. to, That's yeah, violation. yeah, it, it tried to abscond with the mayor in a police car. He took his own car, called us. We ran over with our cameras and filmed it as they locked the door and, you know, forbid the public to come into this meeting. But they declared us, uh, that an emergency existed uh, because they got thousands of angry emails from people around the world. So they said there were death threats, but nobody's seen any actual pointed death threats to anybody on the council or the police chief. If they exist, we certainly haven't seen them. So they put these police officers on administrative leave. They told them, you don't have the right to remain silent. You don't have the right to have your attorney present. If we want to conduct a polygraph, you have to do it. Um, and, and the town assistant town manager, that guy that used to be just the building inspector, he's going to investigate you. So they fired Linda Conley, the administrator, who was the one in charge of that NCIC database and all the records. Fired the lady in charge of keeping the records safe. Oh, remember that the week after she was fired was when the state was coming in to audit those records, by the way. Yeah, yeah. A week later, the state was supposed to come in and audit those records. So they placed these, these police officers on, on leave, paid administrative leave, Thank just you. like they should have done to the chief. But they started firing them. They fired the leader of the group, and they fired Linda Conley. The lawyers for the um, for their union for ASCOPS, I guess, wasn't getting on the ball went quite quick enough. Went on vacation, um, and so they have had to hire a private attorney out of Phoenix. He fired a uh, filed an injunction, and uh, an injunction was granted against the town on Monday. <clears throat> Said you have to reinstate these people, and you're ordered to a show cause hearing on the 15th. So apparently Officer Ponce, Sergeant Ponce, went down to find out about being reinstated after he was sure they had been served. And Mr. Johnson, the building inspector slash assistant town manager slash little Hitler, says, I don't care about no restraining order. I say you're fired. And I'm going to cut you a final paycheck and let you know when it's ready. So uh, I'm hoping that, or at least we're under the impression that that law firm is going to be requesting that they be held in contempt of court. They are, are ordered into a hearing on the 15th. Um, but we, we just basically are knocking on every door, every day, in every way, you know, they need to pay. <laughs> so right now, you know, there's a car wash going on in Quartzsite to raise money for their legal defense fund. And, and uh, we hope there's a lot of people there right now getting their car washed. Also, on the website, supporters of Mayor Foster, there's a button where you can click into PayPal. Now they set up a bank account in Yuma. Yeah, they have uh, a bank they've got, account. There's a corporation involved. Uh, 
they're doing it all legal, but there's an actual legal defense fund being organized. You can click. Yeah, you know what's legal? I give them money. Yeah, right. But oh, and, don't give me money. hoops to jump through, man. I, and in all this, of course, I still have, I, I'm off work because of my arm. I'm supposed to be off work for another couple weeks. I'm expected without insurance to go pay to have an x-ray again, which I can't afford. So I did break down. I have a zero balance in my bank account, so I broke down and got a PayPal account and put a donate button on my blog site. And I said, a quarter for Quartzite, just a quarter. Come on, a quarter will help me ba buy a bag of dog food. We're feeding five rescue dogs on top of our own. So. <laughs> but we're trying, so I don't know. Order. You okay, pick, let's, you before pick. we get you to pick. the questions, go ahead, yeah, go ahead and come up here and give uh, your five minute say or whatever, and then we'll take questions for everybody. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Ed Foster, the mayor of Foster. You're taller than I am. <laughs> well, I, I just want to say one thing. You know, Jennifer and I both have been acclaimed as heroes. You know what a hero is? A hero is a person faced with a circumstance who does the right thing. That's as simple yeah. as it is. We're not really heroes. We were just in a circumstance. And, uh, America, thank you. You know, this thing in Quartzsite, we have to succeed. I mean, no police department in the nation would step forward now because of the publicity we've gotten. If we don't succeed, the whole of America fails. Nowhere will people step up for corruption. Right. It's gone already. Now, but <laughs> we have to succeed here. Our people are going to be... I, I got word yesterday that one of the ladies who is involved in getting government going in Quartzsite, she's been getting calls. People are afraid to go vote in this election on the 30th. They're afraid of retribution in Quartzsite. I mean, this is beyond serious. When that comes to you can't go vote in America, it's really serious. So when is the election? The thirtieth. Of what? August. Right? The Saturday is the twenty seventh, that's when the big rally. And then Tuesday is the Well we need to have people stay over and just kinda hang and make sure everything's okay. Well vote fraud. We're all about vote fraud right here. There you go. Election fraud. It's just serious out there, folks. We need help from the state, and what I'm seeing right now is they're, they're getting ready to do a little slap on the wrist and make it all go away. You know? All of these police officers didn't get suspended, did they? There's like 10 that had to stay home and 4 that are right. still working? Is that they, they, you know, I, I, I don't trust the courts. I don't trust the uh, state. The governor's been remiss. She's been hiding out. Oh, yeah. She's been in her ivory tower. I mean, I went on national radio and said, you know, courtside's burning and Phoenix is fiddling, and I still didn't get any attention. So, yeah. Jen doesn't know how to help. Yeah. Hey, let's go ahead and take some questions. We'll start with these two gentlemen. Go ahead and um, we'll... Oh, yeah, you mind? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Jennifer, I don't know if you understand it or not, but you're the new Aaron Brockovich. Are you going to make a movie of this? <laughs> oh, really? Seriously? Oh, yeah, movie deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Movie guy. Have a happy ending. There was a guy that, that had a newspaper in Quartzsite before me, Bob Miller, and now he writes a small column for me because of his health. But he actually gave me his archives of like all these newspapers back for like 20 years. So I actually thought about it. If everything else goes to hell, maybe there's a movie or a book right. deal, and, and I, can, I might be able to quit grooming someday after all. <laughs> I, I got to say, in one of his old papers, he had a little article in there that said, politics and quartzite is more entertaining than Saturday Night Wrestling. <laughs> so so like, where do the, where, where's most of the voters of quartzite? Where do they stand in all this? Well, we, we had 3,600 people, about 1,300 registered voters. We had a 54% voter turnout the last time, and the town is divided right down the middle because um, the sort of rhetoric that was, that was being put around before my newspaper started, people thought that things were different. They thought these people were different. And a lot of people that voted to keep them in have actually openly said, I wish I could take my vote back. So, I, you know, I would like to think that maybe we're at the 60-40% point, you know, it, 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 in actual that. registered voters, but Let most people 